Y254. Imagine. Right, fantastic. Welcome back. You are still hanging up with us right here on Why in the Morning. Right about now, we're about to delve into matters, politics, and you can always chime in on the hashtag Why in the Morning. You can find us everywhere on all our social media platforms at Y254 channel. And personally, you can find me at Brian Sako 101. The hashtag is still Why in the Morning, and also this segment is all about politics. So we're just about to get a quick uh, scan through of what else is making headlines political wise, you know, and this includes leadership opportunities. The situation in our country right about now in matters state of the nation and uh, joining me in this conversation is a very powerful gentleman he has i'll say a gangster cv or a gangster resume and uh, the one and only mr honorable let me call him honorable isaac maura maigua i believe that is his middle name he's a politician he's also a disability advocate and uh, a former nominated uh, senator in the Kenya Senate rep representing persons with disabilities. He was also the first member of parliament in Kenya with albinism. And also at age 22, he was a third year student. He was appointed as a government pioneer board member of the National Council for Persons with Disabilities. And in 2006, he joined the ODM, that is the Orange Democratic Party. He has also worked with various local and uh, international NGOs in and out of the country. A, he has a master's degree from, uh, uh, in development studies from Nelson Mandela University and also a master's in social and public policy from the University of Leeds in England. He's also a published author and a columnist at uh, the Star newspaper, just learned of that lately. And he has so many titles. This is just like an intro of part of his CV or resume. That's why I'm calling it a gangster. And joining us live in studio to take on this matter, we're going to delve into matter state of the nation, Honorable Isaac Maura Maigo, or I believe it's Isaac Maura Maigo. Isaac Maigo Maura. Oh, Isaac Maigo Maura. Yes. So Maigo is your middle name. Yes, it is. All right. Yes. First of all, Happy New Year. Happy Good New Year. morning. Nice yeah. to meet you. Thank you, Brian. I'm happy to be here. All right. It's my first time on Y254. Oh, it's your first time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you've been to our Big Brother station. <laughs> yes, yes, all of them, actually. Right. So yes. welcome to Small Bro. This is, the other one is a Big Brother. This is Small Bro. Welcome to Y254. Thank you very much. Right. Just to start off on a lighter note, how was your 2022? Of course, you know, it was an eventful event in our country. We we had uh, our election, mm. uh, the new leadership came in place, we had uh, also new CSS who were appointed, and then towards just the middle of the year uh, issues, not even the middle, towards the end, we had mm. issues in security coming up. There was a lot of banditry attacks left, right and center, of course, the economy took a nosedive and mm. so many other things happened. And here we are with the new administration. How was 2022 for you before we get to the matters at hand? I think it was a roller coaster. It was a great year with ups and downs. Um, I was in the rough and tumble of politics, uh, okay. campaigns in Rio constituency, very, very deep into the interior, you know, meeting all people of all, all sorts of uh, walks of life, uh, joining the presidential campaign team, coordinating Kiambu County, uh, doing issues to do with persons with disabilities and political participation. Of course, the issues of ma election management, the actual day, which was really quite interesting. Uh, being in charge of the whole of Mount Kenya West, and then uh, all come, coming all the way to the, the the Supreme Court rulings, and you know, and 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 and, and the final settling down uh, of the new administration. So it's quite quite something. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's start with back in Nairobi. Um, mm. Recently, is it recently? Yeah. Recently, we had uh, that. It seems to be like a back and forth going on between you know our deputy and uh, our very own Nairobi Governor, uh, Honorable uh, Sakaja, 
And uh, this is in regards to matters even closure of uh, entertainment and sports. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, let's say bar and restaurants that were closed. But then uh, even in the People Daily newspaper, he says today, he says he's not going to back down. But on the other side, uh, the deputy is so super forward. He says that, you know, before Sakaja makes any move regarding business in the city, he should first call for a meeting or he should first consult from the people who actually assisted him to come into power. And this includes even, um, he said, uh, long distance matter should not operate, you know, operate in the CBTs as, as well. So uh, this actually disenfranchised a lot of business. And uh, from where you sit, do you feel it was the right move? Are we heading in the right direction when it comes to you know, ensuring that the city stays afloat business-wise? I think the mainstream media was trying to look for a story because now Kenya Kwanzaa government was settling in. And they were trying to create fissures within the Kenya Kwanzaa administration as to perpetuate the narrative uh, that is highly polemic, that this, this versus that. Um, I mean, you've succeeded in doing so. Uh, I don't agree with you as right. mainstream media. But I think the, the issue of noise pollution is real right. uh, in our cities. Uh, people may not even be able to sleep. I was just listening to a documentary uh, uh, by uh, a journalist in the BBC about some woman at Pipeline. Um, who couldn't just uh, have any tenants because next to a church that was making a lot of noise at night. And that's a church. Yeah, that's a church. A club. Yeah, so right. I think there is agency in making sure that uh, this noise pollution uh, is reduced. Right. But to close people's businesses again is not acceptable. Right. Uh, because this is, these are people's livelihoods. And, uh, you know, Nairobi City County is, is the ones that have been, uh, you know, sponsoring uh, or rather licensing these people. Right. So I, I, I am of the view that it can be done. There can be a middle ground right. uh, because uh, uh, there is agency in what uh, businessmen are saying right. that you cannot just cut us off our livelihoods. Right. And let's remember that this is a hustler government. It's right. about the small man. Uh, it's not about big business, because if it's about big, big business, then you could deal with it uh, in a very structured manner. But small business, uh, yes, do it, but also consider that this, these are people's livelihoods. Now, including the governor himself. Right. But on the other side, he has a lot of backup or a lot of support from uh, the Western region. They said it's the right move and they're supporting him. So... He could be, you know, like you said, perhaps it's the media trying to take a different tangent or there could be an underlying issue that maybe later on will come to explore. Can I ask you, Brian, okay. can you actually say without certainty that all of the bars in Nairobi are owned by people from one certain region? Absolutely that not. Is, that, that's why I'm saying this is a media creation and it's very easy to fall prey to that. You see, the equivalent of that is social media okay. where people want to, it's a psychological warfare, okay. see. So, so that then you, people would want to, to make you doubt about your own self and even how you think of yourself. All it's right. very intrusive. But now this one is more far-fetched because um, it's a long shot because then it, it is being laced with uh, regional politics. Right. Uh, uh, and, and we know that where, where it is heading to. But All I right. want to say, no, the Kenya Pons administration is alive and kicking, is strong, united, and you have only one government, that one of William Samoya Raputo. Amen. Yes. Now let's deep dive to the Nyanza region. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, the president concluded his two-day Nyanza tour. And uh, he initially, uh, I'd say maybe last year, he, there was a lot of resistance a little bit when he made his first visit uh, after he was elected into office. But this time round, he had a warm reception. Of course, uh, sees Elude Wall. In fact, there were billboards erected uh, along the way to just welcome, you know, the president of the country into the Nyanza region. Some of the things that were discussed include, you know, ensuring that stalled projects are completed. And of course, uh, those are a lot of hits and misses. Those some of those leaders who complain that you know the president should at least visit all the regions but then this was just a two-day tour and in fact and to back it up he had his uh, support uh, that is the deputy president Rigadi Gashago uh, when it comes to uh, ensuring that the west uh, the Nyanza region stays together do you think it's going to be an easy move to ensure that all the leaders come on board despite the fact that it's Raila's stronghold I was there at uh, Gangu village uh, in Asembo or Arieda, Sierra County on Saturday. And I, I must say I'm very, very happy to, uh, to have been with the people there. They, uh, the reception was very warm. Right. So uh, Jasiaya uh, received my most uh, 
sincere congratulations and also thanks because of the way you were able to host us. Very peaceful uh, and of course led by the Nomia Church, uh, which was started by Prophet Johanna Owalo, uh, the grandfather of Eliud Okech Owalo, okay. the CS of ICT and the digital economy. Okay. Um, and, 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 and it was very, very interesting because uh, I, I, the Nomia uh, <laughs> sect <laughs> has uh, broken into 14, you know, smithereens actually. And yeah. they have over 1 million people followers. And, 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 and there were so many archbishops there. Right. Uh, but it was very good, very peaceful. Uh, the leader spoke very well. I, my good friend Carolio Mondi spoke very well. Uh, there is this young man from uh, who is a, a speaker of the county assembly of uh, CIA. Okay. Of course, uh, the governor James Orengo, and uh, his nemesis Wajonya, uh, you know Nicholas Gumbo. Right. Basically, it was a nice opportunity for the leaders to interact with the head of state and to lay bare their requirements for development. Right. If you go to Kisumu, you can see actually Professor Nyang Nyongo right. has done a very good job. Right. Uh, Kisumu is very clean; it's very orderly. Right. And if you had gone to Nyanza some uh, 15 years ago, right. there was a lot of poverty, a lot of poverty. But now going back, you can see good houses. You can see infrastructure is, is great. And you, you now see the, the benefits of the devolution. You can right. feel it. You can see it. Mm -hmm. the, there's, there's improved livelihood quite, quite a bit. And also... Um, you can also see the possibly the handshake government helped the region. Right. And of course, the Nusumkate Serikali, which I also served as an advisor to the Prime Minister, right. uh, the government of 2008 to 2013. Right. So, so that, 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 that is, is clear, that when people are closer to government, you can see some visible development. Right. Um, I think uh, uh, the president put it very clearly, the media again is mm -hmm. culpable of trying to balkanize the country, that at root of storms Nyanza. I mean, he is the president of the Republic of Kenya. Okay. We actually have uh, gone past the elections now, Brian, yeah. because uh, the elections was too, this was the closest in the history of the Republic of Kenya no. because uh, the difference was only 234,811 votes, right. uh, a margin of 1.64%. Right. The ever closest uh, similar one was 2007, but at least it was, it was higher because the difference between uh, Kibaki and Raila was 2.35%. Okay. So this is the closest ever in history, yet there was not a single drop of blood that was shed. Right. Uh, people are, are, are maturing, uh, really. The National Assembly has a, had a return uh, uh, you know, of 55% of its members, unprecedented in recent history, uh, post-independence. Uh, so therefore, we are moving forward as a country. You can see there's a deliberate, concerted effort to ensure that we strengthen the institutions of governance. But at the same time, you see also uh, a situation where uh, many Kenyans never voted as well. Eight right. million never showed up at the ballot. So yeah. that also tells you that there is a shift uh, in terms of how we see uh, things. And uh, there is therefore a need for government to ensure that it performs the best. Right. The Onyanza region, even if they didn't vote for William Ruto, right. they have very powerful positions in government. There is a principal secretary for interior, the Kibicho of this administration, right. uh, Ray Omolo. Yeah, well. yeah. right. uh, then uh, CSL Yudowalo, of course, obviously. Uh, we have the chief of staff in Regadi Gashagwa's office, deputy president. Right. is another young man from the region. And many other people, people like Dr. Ojoang, he's a Kenya K K KPLC board member and also Nairobi Rivers Commission. And many others have been, uh, you know, appointed to various opportunities in government, including the chairman of Lake Basin Development Authority, my friend uh, um, Waure, uh, uh, James Dianga Waure, uh, who participated in the 1982 coup. He was in the military. A very good old man there that I like a lot, a, li a revolutionary. So you, you can clearly see... Uh, uh, a very clear concerted effort to ensure that this Kenya is, bal is not balkanized. We are one nation right. and it doesn't matter your political affiliation. And President Ruto has actually put it very clearly that first and foremost, he needs to uh, uh, work with all of the elected leaders despite their affili political aff aff affiliation. Right. And number two, that he is desirous of a situation where the, the, the official position leader position 
Right. Is reinstated back in government in, in the parliament, right. and uh, the 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 creators of the democracy, right. you know, the originators of do of democracy, found it fit that in some kind of a constitution or uh, arrangement where those who do not get to win over the executive arm of government mm. find seats in parliament so that they can play their effective oversight role, right. and it has worked very well. But in our situation. I think we wanted competition to fizzle out. So we have leaders of minority in this case who are basically imposters or mere delegates of the real leadership that is outside of parliament. Right. So therefore, it is important to have those who have competed, uh, the first runners up, to join the National Assembly. And I would postulate and say, even the, the running should go to the Senate so that they can lead their troops from within parliament. All right. Yeah. Before we talk about matters, the Hustler Fund, of course, mm -hmm. from a far-fetched point of view, would, mm -hmm. would it have been possibly to see, you know, as Muir leader, Ilo Dinga, pull up to the situation and maybe say hello? <laughs> no, no, no. Let him keep his uh, distance because, of course, he has... I'm sure he will also do his tour. Right. Uh, he, I, thought, I, I saw he's in South Africa. I, okay. I'm sure he's going to do his tour as well. Right. But if I was to be honest, Brian Sakwa... Right. It's, it's about time Raila Odinga just hung his boots and said, I've done enough for this country. I've run five times for president. Almost everyone uh, right. in the political scenario has passed through him, including myself, right. including William Ruto and everybody else. But it's right. time to say, well, uh, let me hand over this baton to somebody else. And people like Kiza BCJ did it. Right. And, and it's okay. It's fine. Right. But uh, I still see a, a small group of people trying to push him. Right. Because I think it's about uh, a generation takeover. After right. William Ruto, um, I, d I don't think it would be very easy for Raila Odinga to beat him in 2027. Right. And that time Raila will be at least 83 years old. Mm -hmm. yeah, so Do you think he'll have run out of the tenacity and capacity to run again? I think the bet bet better days are be behind him. Okay. The Raila Odinga that I knew that was really powerful and very nice and very ebullient was the 2007 Ray Laudinga. Okay. At that point, honestly, he was at his prime. All right. I don't remember how old he was, but you can remove 50, 15 years from uh, 78, you will right. get about uh, 63. He was very, very, very strong. Brilliant. Uh -huh. And very, very, um, uh, for the right. That okay. time, he had what it takes, he had what it took, it takes, yeah, he had what it takes to lead the country. But now, I think uh, there is a younger generation of leaders who should actually be given an opportunity, even from his no own Duanyanza. And you could see there is that debate. People okay. are bargaining. Right. People are whether he should bargaining. run in 2027, yeah. whether he's, he's... No, no, no. The, 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 the people and their leaders are bargaining. Right. Okay. So, so, so it's, not most, it's not about the person of Raila Odinga, okay. because he's extremely popular uh, okay. in, you know, to, to the people that uh, support him. Okay. It's about we are moving, but where? Right. Are we moving by joining Ruto in his government? Do we create our own alternative leadership? So, and this is happening within ODM. It has nothing to do with saying, Raila, now step aside. It's because time has come for that region to have a new leader. Right. Yeah, and certainly it may not be the people who are currently uh, in very high senior positions and right. who have been there for long. I see the group around Carolio Mondi, uh, Davis Obama, uh, you know, of course, Eliud Owalo, uh, crafting a new leadership and there, right. there could be those who will be in, uh, supporting President Ruto and there could be those who will provide their own leadership right. away from Raila but within the confines of a new narrative uh, 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 that then it is time for young people to take over. So, so that's why I'm saying, you know, William Olentimama okay. was a kingpin of the Maasai but he was embarrassed. He had to be defeated before he bowed out of politics. Right. It doesn't have to be that way for Raila. I right. mean, uh, this was his best opportunity to win the presidency. It didn't go his way. I think it is about time that uh, now somebody else takes over. All right. Uh, he sounded off at some point and said he feels like uh, Chebukati should be, you know, uh, put to jail. He should be announced as a criminal. And then also in a joint media address recently we had uh, the president uh, who, who said that, you know, he feels like Azumio leadership was built on quicksand and it might be the end of uh, the Azmir leadership in as much as there's a lot of also young leaders who are trying to vouch for it to stay afloat. Do you believe in those sentiments? For Wafula Chebukati, I, I, I am of the humble opinion 
that he is the best thing that ever happened to this country. I don't agree with the idea that he is a criminal. Why is he a criminal? He refused to back down when uh, Azimio wanted uh, him to alter the results. Right. He's the last is it month. verifiable that he was coerced to alter the results? Of course. I mean, it is on record. Right. It is on record. Uh, they are sworn affidavits to that effect. Uh, at some point, uh, some people were even planning to kidnap him. Others were even planning to kill him. He was even hit uh, at Bomas. When uh, f the final revelations of what happened in Bomas came come to fall, people yeah. will be very embarrassed. So okay. let us not go by that sentiment because every time there is an election, we destroy people's careers. Uh, I think the most risky job, by the way, Brian Sakwa, I must warn you, okay. is to become an IBC commissioner. Mm -hmm. Personally, I would not want to be one. Mm -hmm. because it has destroyed so many people's careers. What do you think if happens you, in the background? No, no. It, it's not even a, co a question of in the background. Right. It's the fact that whatever, whichever way the elections goes, the people who take the flag are the commissioners. Right. Starting with the chairman. Uh, Kivuitu is now long dead and buried. Uh, he was right. the first to face a casualty. Then Isaac Aysan, uh, Hassan uh, uh, Ahmed, he was right. also vi vi vilified. Musando. Now right. we have Musando uh, as, an, as, as, a, as, a, as a technical person. Right. Then now we have Uchebukati. But for then me... Then we also had Rosalina Kombe who resigned and yeah. uh, went abroad. Yeah, yeah. so right. I think for me Chebukati is a hero. He stood by what was the will of the people. It was never overturned uh, when Akina Charera wanted that to be moderated. And he, he's, he's leaving the uh, IBC, his shoulders high, and I'm very proud of him because no. they were offered everything. In fact, I was speaking to one of the commissioners, and he told me that they were told that they would be rewarded handsomely and they would live very comfortably for the rest of their lives. Okay. But they chose to do what was right. And I must say, God bless them, even as they leave office today. Are you saying that because you're an ardent supporter of the president, you know? You could be saying that because you're in the Reuters government. But I'm sure if you were on the other side, you'd have different remarks. No, not at all, Brian. Uh, not at all, because I have been in this country for a very long time. I've been in national politics. This is my 17th year. So when, when I'm speaking, I know what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, there's nobody I haven't interacted with in this country. Okay. I've been, I was with Raila Odinga for 10 good years. I've worked with Mr. Uhuru Kenyatta for four years. Now we are working with uh, uh, William Ruto. So right. I know the terrain of our politics very well. Okay. So I'm not saying that because of anything. I'm saying it with a lot of conviction that right. Wafula Anyonyi Chebukati is a hero of 2022. Right. He was able to stand firm uh, against all forms of intimidation. And you know, remember, initially when he started out, he looked like he had no spine. He looked like he was malleable. But now he's, he's finished strong. And that's what you need to do. We will remember him as a hero. And okay. history will judge him very kindly. Uh, very yeah. kindly, yeah. Because, you know, for Raila Odinga, anybody who does not agree with, he, with the outcome of elections uh, to his favor, okay. he's, a, he's, a, he's a criminal, he should be jailed. I don't think we should go that direction, honestly, right. Brian Sakwa. Okay. At some point, you have to agree, yes. Uh, whether fairly or unfairly, there's a winner because that is what happens. And you move forward. He, you know, you surrender as a tactic. Eh? Right. It's one of the 14th laws of power. Right. Okay. Fantastic. Now, uh, when it comes to the position of uh, the Prime Cabinet Secretary, um, uh, Azimio leader, Raila Odinga, uh, gave his remarks and said, this is just a similar implication of what he had suggested in the BBI, which failed or was not successful. But then it followed with a lot of conversation saying his, the president should just come out clear and say he's a prime minister because what he's trying to do is maybe try to calibrate, you know, um, his, uh, or imitate his, you know, BBI, uh, I'll say petition to say for lack of a better word. And then also, uh, I think in the People's Daily newspaper today, they say law experts split over Ruto's bid to change the constitution. So it has been tried to, you know, be painted as if he's borrowing a leaf from the BBI. Do you agree with it? I think the, uh, the prime minister position uh, was first created uh, in 1963, 62 actually, okay. uh, the first Prime Minister of Kenya was Jomo Kenyatta. And I was watching the other day him taking oath of office as Prime Minister okay. and you know, pledging allegiance to the Her Majesty the Queen, Elizabeth, Alexander Mary uh, the Second. And um, then it was uh, a consensus, an, an accord 
position created uh, out of the 2007 uh, elections. But if you look at the drafts, the various drafts of the, of the, of the constitutional amendment, it was a key feature. Why? Because of our, uh, our multicultural society, uh, many nations into one state. So going forward, the prime cabinet secretary position will be a key plank uh, in the negotiations of coalition buildings in this country. Okay. And it was a creature of the Kenya Kwanzaa administration because you didn't need to amend the constitution to create it. Right. Yeah. Uh, Raila Odinga used to call it chief secretary, chief cabinet secretary. But then the Kenya Kwanzaa, we call it prime cabinet secretary. It is now part of the presidency according to executive order number one of 2023. Okay. Uh, do you want the prime cabinet secretary to also have a docket? You can see he is a chair of all principal secretaries committees. He is the one who is coordinating the relationship between the parliament and the executive and many other responsibilities. Now, okay. if you look at the position of deputy president, right. he's just a principal assistant to the president. Right. But then the president has gone ahead to give him roles around uh, coordination of all cabinet committees. Uh, he's a chair and also he's uh, doing intergovernmental relations between uh, national and county governments, the international development, issues to do with the coffee sector and reforms uh, of, of such nature. So both gentlemen have got their hands full of work. Right. And that is, a, that is a novelty of our president. And President William Ruto uh, is somebody who wakes up very early. He's able to do so much within a day, different from the previous administration where you'd go to sit us and wait for three, four hours before, and you're told to come there at six and you'll be called for the, into the, for a meeting at 10, 10, 10 a.m. So I think, let us accept that uh, these ideas uh, were killed, for example, for the Prime Cabinet Secretary or Prime Minister by the ODM, by the way. I was part of it. Because I really was for you parliamentary system. You feel so? No, no, I feel it's so. It's evident. I was part of that. Okay. Brian, don't look at me here as just somebody who is on your TV uh, talking. I was part of that process. In fact, myself and Miguna Miguna uh, um, uh, took uh, Raila Odinga to task on that issue right. because he's the one who accepted a pure presidential system when we had said as ODM at that time that we are parliamentary system. Okay. And that is when the prime minister position was killed mm -hmm. because at that point ODM felt they were going to win the presidency anyway so they never wanted to share the cake with anyone. But yeah. a prime minister position will always be there because of there are too many tribes. All right. And five of them, I'm so sorry to speak to you because I believe the last election really moved away from, uh, as my, away from tribal politics. Right. Um, the Gemma, the Kalenjin, the Luya, the Luo and the Kamba constitute 70% right. of the Kenyan population. 70%. Right. So you, you really, when you have two positions to share at the top, it becomes problematic. So right. the prime cabinet secretary position will become a common feature of our government going forward. And right. if you read my article in the Star, uh, that's what I was arguing. In terms of right. statecraft, that was the key stabilizing effects, the position that really helped us to have a peaceful transfer of power. Right. So, it's factual. Anyways. Mm -hmm. Now, Hansla Fund. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you'd agree with me. Is it a game changer? Of course, there's been uh, leniency. Uh, there was a lot of leniency. It has been also weaponized. And uh, 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 the latest update says around 877 million Kenya shillings has been repaid, with the savings amounting to up to 677 million. Of course, the money is being to help the hustlers, you know, uh, that is, we, sometimes you call it the underdog or the local mananchi. But then uh, at first, there was a lot of, um, I'll say a lot of uh, heated up debate whether it's, it's a game changer or it's going to actually put the local mananchi into more debt because when, uh, I remember when the first, the first bunch of those who actually signed up for the hustler fund, they were like, I'm only getting 500 bob, how is this going to help me? And I'm only getting 200 bob. Is it going to even change my life? But then I remember the deputy president reiterated that uh, if you're not a hustler, then that 200 bob is not for you. So don't sign up for the hustlers fund. Do you feel like it's a game changer for the local manager in terms of even sustaining their livelihood, you know, starting up businesses? I've not heard personally of someone who got 100,000 though, that to start a business from where you sit. Uh, Brian, um, you know, this country is very unequal. And I want to give you a graphic ex ex example of how we are unequal. We are at 10 trillion 
also economy, uh, shilling economy. Out of that, only 90 individuals are worth over and above 100 billion Kenya shillings. So they own 90% of the economy. Okay. Okay? So the rest of us 50 million share the 1 trillion or thereabout. For you to be in the top 1% of Kenya's richest people, top 1%, leave alone the 90, because that is way, way, way up there. Zero, zero point something. You need to have a net worth of 2.2 million Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. If you listen to the governor of Central Bank, mm -hmm. the reason why you had to justify why you had to withdraw 1 million shillings is because over 90% of the accounts held in this country, they cannot come in anywhere near 90,000, and then 1 million Kenya shillings. That is for withdrawal. <laughs> withdrawal, yes. Right. And even deposits. Right. Majority of the people, both in the public and private sector, earn below three quarter of Kenyans earn below 50,000 shillings a month. Right. So that tells you we, have a we are a very unequal society. Extremely. Right. Now, what happens to availability of credit is that on one hand, there's a very small group of people that are able to access credit because they have assets. Right. So they have chattels, they have titles, they have whatever that is there for them to show their wealth. And those are the people who can be lent for. And they, even then, it's very difficult. Okay. Because of the expanded government size, because of the same constitution, now lenders, the deposit-taking deposit, uh, institutions, have decided to invest more in government. So government is borrowing from the local market over 900 billion every year. That is to mean if you have a business idea, you cannot get money to go and start it because most of that money will be lent to government. All right. And you know, government is not necessarily the best in terms of efficiency of investment because a good amount of that money is going for recurrent expenditure to, buy, uh, to, to, to pay salaries and to buy things like teas and pens in offices. All right. Now, the Hustler Fund is a game changer. Because right. when people cannot get credit, affordable credit from the banks, they go to Shylocks, who are giving very high interest rates to people. All right. Now, and then the other, the other option was fintechs, this uh, Fuliza, borrowing via the phone. All right. So it becomes a very serious Shylock market, a thousand percent more. All right. So the Hustler Fund has taken money from government, whether it was... Uh, from our own ordinary revenue, that is the taxes that government collects, or it is part of what government has borrowed from the banks, and avail this money at the micro level. Micro, please note, micro level. Micro level. Okay. Because over 15 million businesses in this country, the hustler businesses, no. are hand to mouth, day to day hustles. They earn between 200 and 500 shillings a day. Mm -hmm. Ask your local border border how much they take home as net profit. Right. So not income. So 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 you have to look at it from that point of view. All right. And I will I will demonstrate to you. Uh, but but before I demonstrate that to you, so it was a very serious uh, you know uh, a game changer because government is denying itself of money for development to give it to its supporters, and then the banks and the telcos, the telecommunication companies, coming together to create a fund that is a competitor unto themselves. Okay. And then that becomes a stabilizer because it then lowers the, the, the interest rates. And it has really done signif significantly. You can see Fuliza has cut its, uh, uh, you know, you know, costs, uh, its uh, um, uh, you know, charges by 50% and all of that. So, so that is very, very important. You can see now banks like Equity Bank saying we are going to complement, uh, you know, Hustler Fund with the 250 billion. Right. So that is helping many people access credit. Right. Now, let me show you how. I went, I went for a wedding uh, in Fika. One of my uh, staff was getting married. And I happened to give a lift to some women. And we started having a conversation about uh, their lives. So one of them, Anwan Dia, maybe she's watching, uh, from Kajiado, gave me a very interesting story. Right. 
uh, Anne is 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 is, is a, the, the husband is a fruit uh, vendor. Mm -hmm. uh, like she ha he has a kibanda for selling fruits. Right. But then now um, Anne Wandia moves around selling watermelons uh, to the customers. You know, like while mm -hmm. uh, and you know the whole cast. And then uh, she borrowed seven hundred shillings by that time. Right. From the hustler from fund? From the hustler fund. Okay. And uh, she was given 665. The rest was retained. Right. And she was supposed to pay this within 14 days. So she took this money, bought these uh, watermelons, cut them into pieces, and hawked them around. And she was able to make 290 shillings. From now, that. she was going for the second round with that 665 to make another 290 shillings before she was able to, to repay. repay back. Right. So by the time she repays her 665 shillings, she will have made 580 shillings. That is 87.1% right. of the same amount of money. Right. And her idea was to do that so that she can buy a, a juice mixer okay. uh, so that uh, whatever remains of the watermelons, she, she, there's zero waste because she makes juices out of that and still sells to people. Right. So you can see it is the Kadogo economy. Right. Is that the people at the real bottom of the pyramid? Because those people will never have any collateral. Right. Yeah? They will not have the paperwork to show that they are doing business. But okay. they are the ones who are the majority of the population. They are the ones who are running our, our, our markets. They are the ones who are running our kiosks. They are the ones who are educating our children okay. in our public Harambe schools. They are the people who really matter. Okay. You, you get the point? Right. Now, there is an issue of middle out. And people don't seem to understand this because you hear Joe Biden talking about middle out. Now, middle out are micro, uh, medium enterprises that have been stuck in the rat race mm -hmm. because they don't have enough, you know, capital. So they keep on, you know, recycling the same amount of money with the very minimal profits. Now, right. there are various products of the Hustler Fund. Okay. So the first one was this one. There's another one that will... Uh, the initially, you have to start from that 2,500, whatever, 500, 700, then to up to 50,000 individual loans. Right. But then there's 50,000 up to 10 million for unregulated circles. Right. Then 500,000... No, 50,000 to 500,000 to unregulated circles. Then 500,000 right. to 10 million to regulated institutions. Right. And it is going all the way up to 100 million. But it's right. going to be graduated. Every two months, there's a new product that is going to be launched. So there's a new one that is going to be launched soon. All so right. you, we have to look at it from the longer term point of view. And the whole idea is to make sure that there's availability of credit so that we can also enhance manufacturing and provision of services so All that right. we can create b more better jobs and increase the tax, tax bracket and the formalization of businesses. Okay. So that then you know who is actually working where and how. Right. But then I, I, I believe the contradiction or the conflicts come in. There's this... Uh, person or this local man in who wants to borrow money to start a business. They don't have a business. So they expected that, you know, when they'll sign up for the hustler fund, they'll be able to get at least 10 to 20,000 so that they can start a business. Maybe they don't have that business. But then when they signed up, they only got 200 bob. So this means uh, this hustler fund is going to maybe only favor someone who has something that's going for them for their lives in terms of, like you mentioned, even small and medium term enterprises as well. Because at this point, we can't see a person who's just seated back at home signing up for the hustler fund to start a business. That's why there's a lot of conflict and contradiction left, right, and center. Let me ask you. you honestly, uh, I saw some people saying to Naomba hustler fund to Kula Chakula. Fair enough. At least that day you never died. Somebody uh, uh, started, uh, used uh, some, uh, I think, 300 shillings. Right. No, 600 shillings, yes, actually. Uh, and bought these uh, Sukumawiki seeds, okay. uh, seedlings. And he, 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 he planted them. And uh, within two, three weeks, and he was doing it as an experiment, just yeah. for the sake of, he was able to have uh, so many of those seedlings. From 600 shillings, uh, he, each one of them going for one bob, because I think he had, um, I forget the amount of, I don't know if it's 100 or what, but he was able to make 6,000 shillings from 600 bob. And this is not somebody who was doing farming. He just decided to do it as a way of. Like just by the way, uh, as a joke, you know, like try, let me try whether it works. It. Right. So there are very small ideas that can turn out big. Right. Out of this money. 
Okay. And the concept is the same, by the way, Brian. Right. If you cannot manage 100 bob, you will not manage 100 million. Right. It, is, it is how you do your mathematics. Right. It's what you do when you, and nobody else is watching that you are able to you be smart and take care of your family and things like those. So let's not try to imagine that the hustler fund itakutoko kitanda and make you a millionaire. It's not going to be that way. You have to work hard, you have to be uh, innovative so that you move with the flow. Yeah. As we close up on that one, who do you feel like the, uh, the Hustler Fund is designed for? Someone who has something going on for themselves or someone who is creative? or has All ideas? of them. All of them. All of them. All right. All right. Uh, away from that, as we close up, uh, let's move to matter security. And uh, towards the end of the year, and even before that, there's a lot of, you know, banditry attacks left, right, and center. We had uh, uh, areas that were highly affected, including recently we've had Marsabit, also Lamu, Nakuru killer gangs that came up. Even right here in Nairobi, there's a lot of muggings. And I remember um, this brought up the issue of uh, the NPR that were deployed to ensure that, you know, uh, people, civilians in the city are safe. But then also there was, uh, there was uh, the end, it, it brought the and to, to uh, I've forgotten the term, uh, the previous administration that was in, that initially it was blamed, it was in charge of killing and assassinating people. Do you feel like, uh, for, you know, when you look at it from now on, if we give it like, let's say, six or more months towards the end of the year, issues in security, some matters in security will be a thing of the past? No, I think it's an economic issue. Yeah. People don't have money. Young people don't have jobs. But also, there was a way in which uh, there was a fight back. Because then uh, there was a pronouncement that uh, police should not harass people. So some of the gangs were taking advantage of that. Somebody was also trying to prove a point, I, I, I must admit. Okay. I think that was the issue. But uh, at least now the situation has been contained uh, to a large extent. And uh, we don't hear of those muggings as they were happening. Uh, in Nairobi, it was becoming very dangerous because people are, are, are being marked in, the, in broad daylight. But the issue of banditry is, is, is a perennial problem. I believe for me, uh, it may even require military intervention. These right. people know who are the bandits uh, and they, can, they should be crushed so that it is no longer a menace. Because I remember even as, when I was very small, uh, very young, uh, during Moy's time, uh, there was still the issue of uh, banditry. So it's not just spring up because of the Kenya Kwanzaa administration. Right. Uh, do you feel like uh, Mr. Kendiki is going to you know, <coughs> deliver when it comes to doing a work completely within security? Because th there was a region he was there just two days later when he left, there was an ambush, livestock, you know, disappeared. Zakwa, the Bible says that the moment you hear, uh, you know, s shouts of peace and peace and peace, then Jesus Christ will come back. I don't believe there is any government that is capable of completely annihilating uh, you know, elements of that cause insecurity because it is a, it's an economic problem. Sometimes it becomes a sport. Sometimes it's people who want to sell to create a market for their small arms. Yeah. So Kindiki is doing his best and I wish him all the best. All right, uh, let's uh, backtrack a little bit to matters. Uh, the economy, of course, our public date is still massive. And uh, remember last week we had, uh, uh, that is uh, Professor Njuguna Ndungu, who is the CS National Treasury and Planning, in a public hearing on proposed medium-term period for the budget of the year 2023-2024. He said um, global focus and economic growth to be slow to a margin of 2.2%. But uh, on the other side, China, as they said, to maybe rise. That is when it comes to inflation, to uh, 2.7 percent uh in terms of sustainability and even borrowing our borrowing patterns will we do you see ourselves borrowing more to sustain because uh the president has been uh has been crystal clear that uh, he, he inherited a dilapidated economy as well and uh, of course there's debt that was left by the previous admi administration and still he will have to borrow again to sustain it when it comes to repaying and i think also the sgr featured at some point which they said the contract is not favoring us, so it, it means we are on loan, we are operating on loan, we are actually borrowers as a country. So, in short, everybody, you know, owes at least a country some money. Yes, I spoke about this very ably way back in 2020. But even earlier than that, in 2014, I could predict that in 10 years' time we'll not have a country to run. And I'm very happy that I have been vindicated, very much so. Because when I tried to raise those matters, I was shut off. But that's not now, uh, that's now what under the bridge. The president has got a country to deal with. 
and he's trying his level best. How? If you look at the Kenya Kwanzaa plan, the plan is that we uh, anticipate uh, what we call uh, uh, debt restructuring. Right. So that then you try to have law, you, uh, you have people to buy off debt right. so that you restructure it so that you, it, 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 it runs for long. Because now we are using about 1.4 trillion to pay the debt and the principal right. uh, out of a collection of 2.1 trillion. That is m ha more than half of what we are collecting as ordinary shareable revenue. At the same time, uh, there is the issue of uh, uh, austerity measures, budget cuts, uh, where over 300 billion shillings have been removed from the, the budget. Really, really drastic. And that has really, really helped. Uh, and uh, the president wants to make sure that he reduces spend expenditure by about 900 billion by the end of next year. I really commend him for that because there's a lot of wastage in government. Uh, the other thing that also maybe we need to do is to restructure the state corporations. There are about 280 public entities, most of which are basically uh, siphoning off money, yet without providing any good services to Kenyans. About yeah. 40 or 50 or thereabout are commercial, and some of them have to be uh, you know, privatized so that you get monies for infrastructural development. Yeah. It is true that we got into wrong contracts with the Chinese, uh, like this one of uh, Expressway, it's not very good at all. The one for, for, for the SGR, most, uh, they have already broken even for themselves in terms of the volume of business or goods sold. But for us, we still remain with the debt. It only increases our real estate value uh, to the, out of the reach of Kenyans. But our goods are not the ones we are transporting. We are transporting other people's goods. Uh, one of the things that, of course, the president uh, is keen on doing is to ensure that there are tax incentives for production. We are subsidizing production rather than consumption. Right. And that is why he was able to do away with the subsidies for fuel, uh, for unga, and water view. But then you can see now, you know, you know, providing cheap fertilizer, and you'll see more of this, uh, you know, in, when it comes to revenue raising measures uh, that shall be pronounced uh, by April of this year. Right. So I, I see a very pro-business approach, but certainly for sure so that we also be able to reduce the national deficit right. to manageable levels, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Right. Uh, it's been researched, and uh, this is one part of what I did in my postgraduate studies, that the sustainable levels of debt to GDP ratio are between 28 to 35 okay. percent. But ours now, we are nearing 70 percent, and we cannot compare with other economies like America or Japan, because then they produce a lot right. uh, of, of, of goods and services. So I think uh, we have a robust economic team at the National Treasury. We have the Economic Advisory Council at the, at the, at the State House. And, and, and I, I, I strongly believe that rootonomics is going to turn us off the edge of the economic precipice right. so that we have manageable fiscal policy. Right. On the other side, uh, the President has a proposal to ensure that uh, his, uh, the tax plan I actually carry, that is the Kenya Revenue Authority, task to scale up VAT collections, which the local Monanchi is going to say they are feeling hard pinched. And of course, uh, it's not going to favor the underdog, like we call it. No, the 60% collection of VAT and the, and the, the, the refunds thereof, I think is a, is a misnomer. VAT should be paid at source. And for me, I'm proposing that uh, we should, have, we should not have any VAT refunds. Because if you are a going concern, you would uh, have the anticipated requirement to pay tax in future. So if you have been overcharged, because people cook up these receipts anyway, we know that, uh, let be given a credit note. It should even be transferable uh, to another company that you own as long as you're the same director. Right. Or even if you, there's an agreement of such sort. So that you, you, you reduce this leakage and seepage. If you're able to increase VAT to 100%, Right. then you are able to turn our economy around. Remember, we are lower middle income economy. Right. And uh, lower middle income economies uh, are able to get up to 25% of their GDP in terms of revenue. We are doing only 14% or 14-15%. Right. So we have to grow our revenue up to about $4 trillion. If you are able to do that, we'll be home and dry because if we look at the current budget proposed for 2022-2023, uh, 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 we are talking about uh, $3.64 so if you are right. able to do four to five trillion, you are good to go. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that is what the government 
uh, needs to do to ensure that KRA does its job well. Okay. And it requires more resources. The establishment requires more people to be employed. Uh, and I believe that the current director general is doing a good job together with the, uh, with the, with the, with the, with the commissioners. There's a new chairman engineer, Todi Moura. Uh, but now, unfortunately, because of the election cycle, Right. Between July, between May and November last year, right. we've not been able to collect about uh, 50 billion. Right. You know, so, uh, July to, to November, 30 billion. Right. May to July, the, the remainder. So we, we, we are falling short of the targets. And right. that will create a deficit at the top there. Right. And, and, and if you look at the budget policy statement, by the way, I was the vice chairman of finance and budget for the senator. Yeah. for three years, and also I served in, uh, in the Budget Com and Appropriation Committee in the National Assembly for another three years. Right. So I have a very good grasp of right. the state of our economy, very clearly so. Okay. So if you look at it from that point of view, that means then KRA will not be able to attain its target. And that means you have to revise the budget uh, downwards. Right. And so supplementary budgets have become like, the, uh, re 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 do, you know, like you are redoing the budget again because we are living beyond our means. And we have to cut our cloth according to size. Okay. Yeah. I would have loved us to talk about Mata CBC, but uh, I'm being directed that we are out of time. By the way, on a lighter note, do you feel like our friend uh, Meguna Meguna is facing a media blackout? We've not heard from him for a very long time. <laughs> no, I don't think so. He's back at home, and I was with him on, uh, on Saturday. He's robust. The crowd was Oh, you were with him on Saturday? Yeah, yeah, he's around. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, he, he's, he's exact, ecstatic, right. and, 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 and I think he's doing well. And right. he's very popular. I think if he ran for office in any of the Luo Nyanza places, he would win, really. Right. And he's, he's become a conscious of the nation right. uh, in terms of standing up for what is uh, right. And, and, and that he really helped us in the Kenya Kwanza administration right. in terms of our messaging, especially right. on Twitter. Right. So kudos, uh, Miguna Miguna. I worked with him. Right. Uh, we, uh, he was uh, an advisor. I was an advisor. Okay. Uh, you know, so I, I have known him for quite some time. Right. Yeah. And he's a very good, prolific writer. Right. Yes. Right. Uh, as we exit, what are, your, what are some of the expectations that you have for 2023? Maybe some of the initiatives you're working on when it comes to leadership that you love the youth to plug in on or to keep watching you. I think uh, 2023 is going to be a tough economic year. Let's not lie to one another. Things are going to be tougher. Uh, the, the taxes are going to be higher, including the, the one that is in court about uh, uh, m -Pesa to bank, uh, bank to m -Pesa charges, 20% uh, excess duty and all of that. So let's brace ourselves for that. But it, in the, it will ease out from 2024. For young people, do not sit back and wait to be given. Stand up for what is right. It may be difficult. Do not be disillusioned. The future is still bright. We can, we can be able to create something out of ourselves. Uh, I mean, I believe and I know that when you have what it takes uh, and you show it to the world, they, they will create a way. There may be resistance. But when I reflect my days as a youth, because right. I'm no longer a youth, I'm 40 years old now. Right. So I can't Still young. <laughs> I, I cannot claim to be youth. But right. I joined parliament at the age of 30 years old, so right. very young man. Uh, you know, um, I joined Senate at the age of 35. Right. So uh, the, there's a lot, and addressed the UN at the age of 26, okay. you know, made my first million at the age of 26 as well. Wow. I mean, bought my first car. There are th so many things I was able to do when I was a young person. All right. and, and, and I'm very proud of it. You know, we went to the, some of the best universities in the world, in okay. England, in South Africa, wherever. Traveled to over 45 countries. I mean, I, I, I know, and I'm standing here, I'm sitting here to tell you, don't, don't, don't uh, go down and say that there's nothing to show for yourself. All Keep right. on fighting when you are not able to stand for yourself. Remember, others have fought for, for this place and they have been able to make it. Right. And as Martin Luther King Jr. said, if you cannot fly, run. If you cannot run, walk. If you cannot walk, crawl. But whatever that you are doing, keep on moving forward. Thank you. Right. Fantastic. I love that. Thank you so much. That is uh, Honorable Maura Isaac uh, Maigua or Honorable Isaac Maigua Maura, if you wanna. And uh, he's also uh, a disability advocate and a former nominated senator in Kenya, Senate representing persons with disability. He was also the first member of parliament in Kenya with albinism. Thank you so much for your time. And also nice to meet you in person. I've always read about Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. I, 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 being the first MP with albinism was, was my dream. It came to pass. It came so to pass. Dreams are valid. 
you know, dreams of Ali yes. in the realm of Lupita Nyong'o. <laughs> yeah, actually, we acted with him together. You and acted I was acting. with Yeah, of course. With Lupita. I, mean, I, was, uh, I was 24, she was 23. Right. I was acting as an aspiring politician. She's my friend, actually. Wow. Yeah. Please tell her we said hi and we'd okay. love to interview her as well. The father <laughs> is my political mentor. All right. Say hello. <laughs> but thank you so much. That has been Honorable uh, Maura Isaac Maig. We're talking to us about the state of the nation. By the way, you can also find him on social media, and that is on Instagram as Maura.Isaac, I think. And then Maura Isaac Maigua on every on all other social media platforms, personally at Brian Sako 101 and at Y254 Channel. That's where you can find us on all our social media platforms. We take a very short break. When we come back, we'll be continuing with the rest of programming, so don't touch that dial. <laughs>